Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to use the ADXL 362 shields from analog devices with the brand new Arduino Uno that you might have picked up from CES or just on Aero.com. Okay, so the first thing is first, uh, you're going to need the Arduino IDE, which is the programming interface that Arduino uses for almost all of their boards. You can get it from arduino.cc, um, just click on the software tab and download the IDE right here, and there's a whole bunch of tutorials online on exactly how to do that. So the next thing that you're going to need is all of the demo documentation that Analog Devices has prepared specifically for the ADXL362 Shield. Um, on top of that, there's a whole bunch of instructions and configuration um, kind of things that you need to have um, under control, but the first thing to do is actually set up the hardware to be programmed and to be used with the Arduino Uno. Um, so the first piece that we're going to do is actually configure this black box to be the exact pinout of these. You can actually see that there are four jumpers that we need to configure, and per the visuals right here, um, this jumper is actually in the correct space, and so is this one, and so is this one, and I guess so is this one. So um, if your jumpers are not in that place, simply just pick them off just like that. You see the little jumper that I just dropped, and just put it on the leads that it needs to be on. Okay, so um, the next thing to do is obtaining the source code at this URL right here. It's wiki.analog slash resources slash eval slash user guide slash Arduino Uno slash reference design slash demo underscore ADXL 362. So we're gonna go open this up and you're gonna see all of the ADXL 362 files that you're gonna need to power this board. But to download everything, just go all the way to Arduino and hit download. And I'm gonna download it as a zip file. I'm gonna hit show and folder and then you're gonna see it all. One thing to keep in mind is that you do need to put all of that download into the uh, libraries folder under your Arduino folder uh, within your documents. That's just where all of the Arduino files are housed. So I'm gonna keep all that in the libraries folder. Um, I'm just gonna hit okay. And so all of my download just went into that folder. Um, and then you should be able to see the extraction show up in that library. So you're going to need to open up Arduino. Once you put that in, it won't work if you just try to already have Arduino opened, you need to restart the program. Um, and it'll go into sketchbook, libraries, and it'll show up the, uh, the folder that they give you um, on the GitHub download is the, it's called Arduino underscore master. Um, so it'll show up in there and you can likely rename it if you want. I just, just as soon keep it the same. So we'll go here, Arduino Uno R3, and then you'll see all of the examples that you just downloaded um, showing up in the actual libraries of Arduino. So I'm gonna click on this one because that is the demo. Just for the record, all of these are different shields that Analog Devices is actually prepared to all be compatible with Arduino Uno, which is super cool. Um, so we'll click on this one. And I'm going to actually split screen this because there is a lot of configuring that we need to do um, per the instructions back on that analog wiki. So it says configuring the software parameters and it gives you a whole bunch of this stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, is we're gonna go into the ADXL362-H file, which of course shows up right here. And then there's a whole bunch of legal stuff. We can scroll past that. And then we're gonna look at um, the first one is the define temp ADC and make sure that that's set to one. So it needs to be set to, depending on if I want it to display analog digital units or if I want it to be displaying in Celsius, you put it at one or put it at zero respectively. I want to put it at zero because I like my temperature in Celsius. Uh, the next thing again is in that same ADXL362-H file, making sure that the ACC temp bias and sensitivity are set um, to be float 360, which is good, and float 0.065. So we're good there. Um, and then again, ADXL H file, scan sensor time. Um, this is just configuring how often you actually read the access um, of the temperature data. So that, let's see, is scan sensor time, 500. And then we want the ACT value and the in ACT timer to be 50. Those are both good right here. You can see that. We want this in ACT timer to be set to 50. So I'm gonna change that to 50. Okay, so we need to go into the communication.h folder. 
and change some of this stuff. Um, so everything that we're going to be changing is actually right in here. Um, it's about three quarters of the way down. So the first thing is the ADXL CS underscore SEL. Uh, make sure that that is set to pen four, which is good. The next is the ADXL underscore int underscore SEL. Boom. Make sure that that's set to pin one. We're good. LCD CS SEL set to pin four. We're good. And then LCD RS SEL. Make sure that that is good. Okay, so we are good. So the next thing it says is to compile and verify your programming. And that was just to make sure that all the configurations and all these files are good. So I'm gonna go back into this just because I want to, and then I'm gonna hit verify, and it's gonna go through and compile everything, and you're gonna actually see these little icons up here disappear to make sure that everything is kind of saved, if you will, um, or compiled. And it'll just take a hot second, and everything is good. So we can go ahead and save that. Okay, save, beautiful. So then those are gone. Now, um, it is time to upload. So, to upload, um, I'm first actually gonna connect the hardware just so that I don't have to unplug and replug it in. Um, so, you can see really easily right here, these match and these match. It's, if you try to plug it in like that, it's just not gonna work. Um, it's pretty intuitive, just make sure that the these connectors are where the screen is and that everything kind of matches up perfectly. So I'm just gonna put those together just like that. Um, and they're a pretty snug fit. Yours might be, might be different, but just kind of crush them down a little bit. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually connect the Arduino to our computer using a USB-A to USB-B cable. Um, you can see just the little connector right there matches up perfectly with that. So I'm just gonna plug that in and you'll see a nice pretty light pop up on the um, screen of the shield and all of the Arduinos powering up right now. So um, this means that we can go start programming our actual board from our computer. So go back into this. Um, again, we already compiled, so all we need to do is upload the code. So I'm just gonna hit upload and it's gonna think for a little while and start flashing all that code into the Arduino. And we should start seeing data be, there it is. So what you can see here is that I start tilting this up you can actually see the acceleration change and go into the y-axis. And then another way to play with this is if you flip it over onto its x-axis, you'll see that it is actually picking up negative acceleration due to gravity. But if I flip it over onto the other side of that x-axis, it picks up positive acceleration due to gravity. And that's just empirical proof that the accelerometer is actually working because the acceleration due to gravity never goes away. And there you have it guys, it was that easy to start implementing this shield on my Arduino Uno. And really the valuable part is collecting immediate accelerometer and temperature data using this shield. And that's what any type of shield actually provides value for. It makes it so easy to get valuable data using an Arduino with these shields, regardless of your application. So if you guys have any questions on this shield or on the Arduino ecosphere, please feel free to contact us at arrow.com.